I'm Jennifer Howard and we're here on a family farm in Williamsburg County, a little over 900 acres that my husband and his sisters inherited. On this farm, we have some open ag land that's cultivated for row crops. We have bottomland hardwoods along the swamp. We have upland planted pines, which are loblolly and longleaf. And we have some mixed pine hardwood stands. This is not a place where we live, but it's a place where we like to visit on the weekends to hunt, walk. Um, we also harvest timber to help, um, help maintain the property. Um, but one of the most important things that we do here is some prescribed burning. As a private landowner, we recognize that even before we were here, fire was a really important part of the landscape. From the time that the Native Americans were here up until present day. So it's our responsibility to keep that part of the landscape going. The burning on our property helps bring up a fresh understory, it helps reduce competing vegetation, it improves wildlife habitat. Some landowners are really intimidated by fire and even by controlled fire. And that's, that's fair, that's, that's a reasonable um, fear. Some of our concerns are the proximity to roadways and how we're gonna control that smoke. Um, some landowners are concerned about their trees and will the fire burn up their trees. We, we've had some experience that are good experiences, so we're not really concerned about um, fire having a bad impact on our trees. The benefits far outweigh all of that. So this controlled burn was conducted by the South Carolina Forestry Commission and our forester, Grace Anna Cooper. So I'm excited to turn it over to her. Hi, I'm Grace Anna Cooper with the South Carolina Forestry Commission. I'm our project forester for Williamsburg and Georgetown County. I'm going to talk to you about prescribed burning. This is one of my favorite topics to talk about. I love helping landowners get the prescribed burning on their property for all the added benefits that it has. So the top reasons I have my landowners burn in this county are for fuel reduction for wildfire risk. Then we also have to get rid of undesired species and then for wildlife benefits and then as well as site prep burning to get the stand prepared to plant in the following spring. Some things landowners should consider before they burn is when they look in their stand they should see is there enough fuel for me to burn this stand or is there too much fuel where it's going to be unsafe for me to go in it and burn it or have a professional come in and burn it. We also look at how big the stand is and where our smoke concerns are gonna go. So if you have roads crossing through your property, what wind direction we need to make sure your smoke gets up and out so we don't have smoke concerns and smoke liabilities. So before we can do prescribed burn, we have to make sure that we have fire breaks in place. And here in South Carolina, most of our fire breaks are done by bulldozers or by tractors that have discs, like farmers that have their own equipment, they can definitely do them with their farm track discs. We have the dozers come through and push the line first. If the landowner wants to groom the trails afterwards, they can do that with the discs as well. You'll have a wide break where it's nothing but bare mineral soil, so the fire can't cross it. So the third thing you have to do before you burn your property is call the South Carolina Forestry Commission, 1-800-777-FIRE. You have to call and talk to one of our dispatchers and they will give you a notification number. But when you call and talk to our dispatchers, they're gonna wanna know information about your fire plan. But on your fire plan, they're gonna ask you what your wind direction is, and that helps with your smoke concerns. So they'll ask you questions like that and where your smoke sensitive areas are. Um, and then once you get done talking to your dispatchers, they'll give you a notification number. Make sure you write that number down, because if your fire were to get out, having that number is an extra piece of liability saying, I call, they made the notification, here's my number. I tried to be safe about burning. It's also a good practice to call your local fire departments. If you give them a call and give them a heads up, if someone calls and says, there's smoke by my house, what's going on? They already know that you're burning and it's, it's an okay, it's safe. So just as a recap, before you burn, you need to do these three things. Make sure your site is safe to burn and there's enough fuel for you to be burning. Make sure that you have your fire breaks in place and that they are clean and cleared out. A lot of times we'll have breaks in them and that's where the fire will get out as the landowner didn't double check their breaks. So breaks are really important, make sure you have that done. And then notify your forestry commission, whether it's us here in South Carolina, Georgia or North Carolina. 
that you're gonna be burning. Another added benefit that I like to talk to landowners about for burning is that it's a really cheap management tool. It is a lot cheaper to burn your piece of property than it is to come through and do an understory spraying or any other chemical treatments or mulching even. So if you can get in and do a burn every two to three years and keep your management up to date, it'll be a lot cheaper for you in the end. And it's also a great tool for um, controlling insect and disease pests that you might have on your property, especially for young baby longleaf. You, you can get brown spot fungus and you can get needle blight, and the best way to get rid of those is by burning your stand. And a lot of times, you can see it on your baby longleaf, you'll just have brown needles coming off of it. Burn it and it'll get rid of that brown spot, it'll get rid of that needle blight. So when you're burning, there's a variety of different techniques that you can learn through different workshops and prescribed fire manager courses that'll help you get more comfortable with burning your property. Um, some of these go from beginner, where you just light the baseline and let it creep through. You don't have to walk through the stand at all. It's your safest way of burning to different techniques you use for different ages. If it's a thicker canopy, if it's a wide open quail woods canopy, all the different techniques that you would use for burning. Liability issues is one of the main concerns of a lot of landowners and some precautions you can take to make sure that you're less liable is to take our Certified Prescribed Fire Manager class. Through the South Carolina Forestry Commission, every fall, spring time frame, we offer the Certified Prescribed Fire Manager course. It's about $50 and it's at least in one place in every region. Having that course shows that you're not negligent, that you've taken the proper precautions to understand prescribed fire and that you know what you're doing. We also have more hands-on learn to burn options that we do on a local level. So you can check with your commission foresters, your Clemson Extension, and your Longleaf Alliance for any local hands-on learn to burn options. For us here in South Carolina, we have the Forestry Commission that can help burn for you. Um, we can put in the brakes for you, we can do the burning for you, but we can also be on standby. So if you're new to burning and really just want the extra added support, we can have a dozer on standby and make sure if your fire gets out, you have someone there for backup. And to do that, you have to have a registered forester look at your property and make sure your burn plan is gonna be proper for your stand. That way you have all of your bases covered. And cost share programs are a way that landowners can get assistance with burning, underbrushing, fuel treatments. And what happens with most cost shares is they'll pair up with an agency to help pay part of the cost for the burning, the fire breaks, or even the mulching and fuel mitigation. So some of the agencies that can help you with some cost share programs are you have your state programs, so anything through the Forestry Commission, but you also have your Longleaf Alliance that can help you with some cost share opportunities, and then your federal programs through the NRCS, the FSA office, and um, we have a WUI grant too, which is Wildland Urban Interface, and that's a federal program as well. So for post burn, the first thing you wanna do is go around your fire and make sure that the fire's completely still within your boundaries, your fire breaks. Make sure nothing's creeped across the line, no trees have fallen and just um, any hot spots you might have, make sure if they're right on the line to put them out, whether it's with your four-wheeler spray or your backpack spray or even just cold dirt. That's our first thing that we do after a burn. After we do a prescribed burn, we like to evaluate our burn. We like to see how the burn did. If we got the fire too hot and it killed too much vegetation, if the fire wasn't hot enough due to the humidity or any other weather factors, um, we like to evaluate why those things could have happened. We also like to look at the different woody stems and you can see on the woody stems, if the bark started to peel back, that means that it killed that tree. You can see how hot the fire got or what way the fire was going by looking at some of the needle cast. You can look at the loblolly pines in the understory. You can see the needle cast or the needle freeze if it has that needle freeze, it means it killed that lot lolly pine in the understory. And you'll be able to see it because the needles will all be facing the same direction. So for this burn, this is a roughly 10 to 12 year old longleaf stand. And we burnt this in mid-February. We burnt this for one of our Learn to Burn workshops actually. And you can see it's now August. So you can see all the lush green grasses and different species in the understory that have come up. When we first burnt this block, it was so thick with briars 
and sweet gums, and now it has nice vegetation for different wildlife to be able to forage on. I'm so excited that we have a Women Owning Woodlands or WOW chapter here in South Carolina. I love coming together with ladies who share the passion for their land, whether it's as an investment or a place to enjoy with their family. WOW gives us a chance to learn more about our land, but then to have some fun time and fellowship too.